Okay, hello, hello. Here we have for you Valerie Calderon, who's going to be leading a very exciting talk about reactive programming with RxPy. Very exciting stuff, a whole new way, streams, filters. I'm really excited for it. So let's give a big round of applause now to Valerie. Hey, everybody. Um, so this is my first time in BICON and also my first uh, English uh, talk. So uh, I'm really, really excited. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. I'm Valerie. Uh, I'm Pythonista. <laughs> I really love the language, and I really love the community. Uh, I'm a telecom engineer, uh, co-founder of the Python Guatemala community. Uh, we started just uh, last year. Uh, these are some pictures of the meetups and some events over there. Um, and I work as a systems development specialist on a GPS trackers company. So we have a lot of information uh, flow into the uh, servers and stuff uh, all the time. So we needed uh, a tool to par parallelize uh, this information, um, but with a good handling of the errors. So we choose uh, reactive programming for this. So what does reactive programming really mean? Um, I choose this uh, picture because it is like a chain reaction. You know, um, reactive programming uh, is, um, comes from reaction. I mean, some, uh, some data comes to the, to the source, and you can handle it, you can filter it, uh, transform it, and get... Uh, the, the value at the, at the end. So the difference, the, the main difference between reactive programming and event-driven programming is that it, the trigger of the action is different. In event-driven programming, you have like input, like clicks uh, and that kind of, of things. And with a click, that's the event that will trigger the action. But in reactive programming, you can have anything, wrap it, and that into the reactive system, and that will be the event that will trigger the action. So it is really helpful. Um, okay, and you, um, okay, let's change the key. Okay, but why reactive programming? Why not just some async tools, uh, like thread-like tools? Uh, well, the first thing I really like about reactive programming is that we have uh, data operators that help us filtering, creating, combining, and, and do a lot of stuff with the data we are wrapping. Um, that's the first thing. Then we have um, not only use uh, one way to get the information. I mean, it's not just one line. We have many ways that we can handle the information um, in parallel. So this is one thing that I really like. Uh, we are going to see something uh, about this with subjects later. Uh, and the other thing is error handling. We have a really good error handling with reactive programming. Um, what we use is an a event that is contained in the observable. And this one will uh, be shown when the error comes up. So. It's really easy to handle it. And how does it work? Well, basically, we have an observable that packs the incoming information, and it can be passed from thread to thread. Um, 
In the observable, we can also regulate uh, the frequency or the life cycle of the information. If it only shows up once or if we want to show it periodically. Um, and then we have the observer, which is the one that takes the information coming from, from the observable. And we, we expect it after the filtering and the processing. And with this observer, we can go further and keep uh, changing the data that is coming. Uh, okay, oh, one more thing about it. Uh, we have three events that we can take from the observable. And these three events are on next, that will be if the data changes or if there is a new element in the, in the stream. And then we have on complete, and this one happens when there are no more elements. Um, and the last one is the on error. And this shows up when, uh, an, when an error occurs. Um, this last two will emit something. Uh, so that value that is emitted, or that wrapper, that package emitted, we can take it from the observer and then uh, go further with it. So this is an example of how easy it is uh, to handle a list, but it can be not just a list, it, it can be anything, uh, just data. Uh, we can take it uh, to an observable. And something interesting is that nothing happens until the observer takes the data or asks for the data. So here we subscribe the data um, and we can, well, in this case, just print it or we can keep on handling the data that came. Okay. Uh, now, there is this another extension from the observable and its name is subject. The subject uh, acts like an observable and also like an observer. So this means um, you can take the incoming data and also subscribe to it. And why do that? Well, the main difference is that when you subscribe to an observable, you have only one, one action, one emitted element. But when you subscribe to a subject, you can have multiple, uh, multiple subscribers and each of it will take the same action. In the observable, if we have multiple subscribers, then each of it will have a different action. Um, so we can combine a new observable to the subject. Um, we'll see that combination later. Um, this uh, is the essence of the reactive programming, the data operators in reactive. Um, these are some categories of uh, data operators, uh, the creating observables, the transforming, filtering, combining, error handling, observable utilities, uh, conditional on Boolean operators, mathematical and aggregate, and connectable. We'll, we're gonna see some examples of it. So the simpler is observable just. So we just take the data and wrap it and then we emit when it's subscribed to it. Uh, so it will just take it and handle it to the end. Nothing, uh, almost nothing happens. Uh, then we have this one. I really like this one. Uh, it's really useful to filter data that that is the one that is incoming. In this case, we have like an input text from the user, uh, but we want to do something or make something happen only if 
this uh, text is larger than two characters, let's say. Um, so we can filter only the valid data that we need. And if it is not uh, matching to the conditions I get, then nothing happens, just nothing happens. Um, we have also a lot of mapping operators, um, but I really like this one, the flat map, because you can, you can think uh, in asynchronous uh, programming or, or in asynchronous tools, uh, you have uh, the information flowing in different orders, right? But sometimes you need the information to go in some order, uh, just as it came. The first one goes first, and the last one goes last, right? But you cannot do that because it's asynchronous. But with flat map, you can also order the, the values that are coming in. Um, so here, we take an observable that goes and gets some value, and when it comes back, it just uh, emits the, the element. So we have an order, as you can see in the, in the image, we have an, an order um, observable uh, in order values just as it came, but reactive, right? Then we have the do action. It is really simple. It's almost like just, but almost always is used uh, to call functions. So we have, in this case, a send response function. Um, if nothing is happening, then we just will send a clear. But if something happens, then it will uh, run the send response and gives us the observer, emits the observer. Then we have the combined last test. So this is what I was talking about with the subject. We can have uh, a subject combine it with an observable. Um, so we can have, in this case, let's say we have uh, a text input and we also go and get information from some place. Uh, uh, these two inputs, the information we are getting somewhere else, and the text input are changing with the time, because the user can change the text that it's getting in, and the information we are getting from somewhere else also can change. So how do we uh, join both of it? Well, First, we have uh, an observer that may be an interval. Uh, this observer will show up uh, every like 60 seconds or every 30 seconds or whatever. Um, and it will take the information that we are getting somewhere. Um, and also, if the user changes the text, in the text input, then it will also uh, emit an element. So we can have both triggers uh, in the same uh, place. So we won't miss any of, of it. Okay. Um, so advantages of reactive programming. Uh, well, it is asynchronous. Um, the error handling, which is really helpful. Um, multiple subscribers, as we just saw, uh, that we can have uh, the action going to many ways, um, not only one, and functional programming, which help us also. We, we have here this uh, example of the combining the subject with an observable. Um, so we have the user input, uh, which will come from uh, throttle last. 
and an interval of one second. So every one second, it will take the user input. And we'll see if the input is larger than two characters. With this user input, we will combine it with the interval. As I said before, we can have a, an observer uh, with an interval of any seconds, any time. And each time the user changes it, then it will throw the, the text or if the interval comes up. So after that, we can join many actions to it. That's another thing that I really like about Rectic programming. Um, we can do action like, like this, uh, send a response. Uh, we get the orderer um, information with a flow map and get the information. And finally, we can subscribe and send the response as, as it says, or an error. Uh, so it's really simple to, to handle the, the error or the incoming value. Okay, so some conclusions. Uh, we use a lot of uh, apps and systems that have ex expensive tasks. We need to run it asynchronously and to do it easily, we can use Rectic programming and uh, use all the operators to make it easy to not only handle it, but filter, transform, create, combine, um, everything uh, from it. So, um, Thank you very much, Valerie. That was very interesting. Reactive programming is really cool. I feel like it's a new thing I need to take on. Uh, all right, so we're going to have a few minutes for some questions. If any of you have a question, there is a mic there and there is a mic over there. So take this opportunity to, to stand up, to move to a microphone, and to get a question answered. Um, do we have, we have someone going to a mic. All right, please go ahead. Are there libraries and frameworks to do this across multiple machines and multiple processes? Um, not that I know right now. Um, the library helps you to um, do it like in the in the process, just in in threads, but not that I know that just. Scaling with uh, multiple machines, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Okay, well, I have one question. Uh, what, is, what is the most challenging thing about trying to move, uh, to take reactive like RxPy and put it into a current code base? Okay, um, I think the, the model the more troubling thing is that you have to understand how it works. Uh, the observable and observer uh, interaction sometimes can be um, a little bit confusing because you are used to have uh, the information just as it is and this is not how it works. It works uh, wrapping the information uh, in these two classes. So uh, I think that's yeah, the most difficult thing. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't think we have any more questions, so thank you very much, Valerie. Let's give her another round of applause.